In addition to the Gini index, sometimes we also have the option of using another measure of purity or impurity of a set. That is called entropy. Okay, so as before, M is the number of classes we have. So in our present case, that is 2. And PK is the proportion of elements in class K. In our case, it's, you know, P of buyer or owner is 0.5 and P of non-owner is also 0 0.5. So the formula for entropy is minus sigma k equals 1 to m pk log to the base 2 of pk. And this takes values from 0 to 1. Okay, So 0 means 0 impurity, it's complete purity. 1 means complete impurity. So let's take a look at how it's calculated for this example case. The scenario is as same as before. This is the formula. And if you apply the formula, you get minus 0 0.5, which is pk times log to the base 2 of pk. Log to the base 2 of 0 0.5 is minus 1. So that's what you get, plus the same value again. And this is 1. Okay. So this is an entropy of 1. Entropy means disorder. Right? So if you have 12 owners and 12 non-owners in a set, okay, that's as impure as it can be. Right? Suppose you had uh, 8 owners and 16 non-owners, then you can say, well, this is almost, this is predominantly non-owners or vice versa. You could say it's predominantly owners. Right? If you had, let's say, all 24 as owners, then you would say, wow, that's pure. There's absolutely no entropy in it. That entropy would be zero. There's no confusion. We know that they're all owners. Whereas if it's 0.5, you know, 50% of this, 50% of that, that is about as much confusion as you can have in a given set. And the entropy turns out to be one. Okay, so you can use this as a measure of impurity as well. So you can use the Gini index or the entropy. Okay, so let's consider this original example. This is the initial set of cases before we've done any partitioning. It's got, of course, we know 12 owners and 12 non-owners. In this case, the Gini index is 0 0.5, as we've already seen, and the entropy is 1. Okay, so now what we want to do is to find a split to improve upon this, right? In other words, we want to split this into two regions, with each region being a lot purer than what is the case with all the cases put together. Okay, so here, how do you find the first split? Okay, so let's say we've got all the lot sizes. The values are all these, 14, 14 point. These are the actual values of lot sizes in the whole data set. Okay, this is a sorted value. Now you can divide this at any of these points, right? That is, you can divide between 14 and 14.8. It doesn't really matter where you put that division. Let's say you put it midway, 14 and 14.8. So you make one division at 14.4. So all the values less than or equal to 14.4 are in one set, greater than 14.4 are in the other set, and so on. So we all these points are the points at which you can cut or partition the lot size. Of course, notice that these two values are all the same. And so now you can just, this is the complete set of available partitions for lot sizes, okay? So clearly, if you're going to place the partitions at the midpoints of two successive values. Okay. Similarly, with incomes, we have all of these places at which we can partition them, right? So at this point, you've got uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 15, 17 possible lot size partitions and you know some such similar number of income partitions, a total of about 30 plus possible ways in which you can divide this original set. Out of all these, we want to choose that division which provides the maximum improvement in purity, either measured by Gini index or measured by entropy. Okay, so there are 38 possibilities. Try out all of these and pick the one that reduces the overall impurity the most. Okay, because we are trying to get nodes as pure as possible. So we're going to take a greedy approach and say, I want to do this, do that partition which improves the most upon purity, okay? So again, we've seen this already. So at first split, you know, when you run the algorithm, 
it finds the first split at 19. In other words, all the values greater than or equal to 19 lot size are in one set, less than 19 lot size are in the other set. Okay, so now you've got two regions. This region has, you know, one, two, three, four non-owners. It's actually three non-owners. One, two, three, three non-owners and nine owners. And this has vice versa, nine non-owners and three owners. Okay, so let's see what happens. Nine owners, three non-owners, nine, uh, three owners, nine non-owners. So we can go ahead and calculate the Gini index and the entropy. Okay, since it's 9393, nine, both, you know, the PK uh, probability of buyer, the two probability values are going to be the same. Okay, so you get a Gini index if you calculate it of 0 0.375, entropy of 0 0.811 for this region and this region. Okay, notice that that's an improvement over 0 0.5 and 1, right? Earlier we had a Gini index of 0 0.5, an entropy of 1. But now we've got two regions, each of which has a Gini index of 0 0.375 and an entropy of 0 0.811. Okay, now, of course, this is just the impurity measure for the two regions separately. Can we condense these and get one impurity measure for the whole scenario? We can, because there are 12 cases here and 12 cases here, right? So you could take a weighted average of the Gini index or the entropy for both of these. And when you take the weighted average, you get the Gini index is 0 0.375. Of course, you know, both are same. So that's what you're going to get. And the weighted average for entropy is 0 0.811. That is also reduced from one, okay? So this partitioning has improved the overall Gini from 0.5 to 0.375 or the overall entropy from one to 0 0.811. So we can now consider subsequent splits, okay? Originally, we started with one node, which one node which contained all the cases. Now we've got two nodes because we split it and we now have two nodes and each of these two nodes happens to have 12 cases. That need not always be the case that they are equally split. Just so happened in our example. So now let's see how to choose subsequent splits. Now for choosing the subsequent splits, we have two choices of which region to split, which node to split. This represents two nodes. We can either split this node or we can split this node. And on top of that, for each of these two nodes, we can split them either on lot size or on income, okay? So if you enumerate all the possibilities, you have many more possibilities now than before because earlier you had to consider the split of only one node. Now you've got two nodes to split. And so you have many more options. The computer program, once again, is going to take all the possible splits on each and every node that it has available. At this point, it has two nodes. And then it's going to choose the best split among all of these possibilities. Okay, so several splits are possible on this group, on income and lot size, and several splits are also possible on this group, on income and lot size. Consider all the possibilities and calculate the overall Gini or entropy under each, and then choose the split that produces the overall best results, as we showed in the last slide. So we can now consider subsequent splits, okay? Originally, we started with one node, which one node which contained all the cases. Now we've got two nodes because we split it, and we now have two nodes, and each of these two nodes happens to have 12 cases. That need not always be the case that they are equally split. Just so happened in our example. So now let's see how to choose subsequent splits. Now for choosing the subsequent splits, we have two choices of which region to split, which node to split. This represents two nodes. We can either split this node or we can split this node. And on top of that, for each of these two nodes, we can split them either on lot size or on income, okay? So if you enumerate all the possibilities, you have many more possibilities now than before, because earlier you had to consider the split of only one node. Now you've got two nodes to split, and so you have many more options. The computer program, once again, is going to take all the possible splits on each and every node that it has available. At this point, it has two nodes. And then it's going to choose the best split among all of these possibilities. 
Okay, so several splits are possible on this group on income and lot size and several splits are also possible on this group on income and lot size. Consider all the possibilities and calculate the overall Gini or entropy under each and then choose the split that produces the overall best results as we showed 